just days after reports that six early voters in at least two West Virginia counties claimed their votes were switched from Democrat to Republican. A couple in Nashville, Tennessee, reported similar problems with paperless voting machines. In West Virginia, one voter said, I hit Obama, it switched to McCain. I'm really concerned about that. If McCain wins, there was something wrong with the machines. In Tennessee, a filmmaker couple also had difficulties casting their vote for the Democratic candidate. The Brad blog reports they had to hit the Obama button several times before it actually registered. And in one case, it momentarily flipped from Obama to Green Party candidate Cynthia McKinney. Patricia Earnhardt said, quote, the McKinney button was located five rows below the Obama button. The couple in Nashville were using machines made by the same company as those in the counties in West Virginia by election systems and software. Meanwhile, there are reports of long lines at early voting sites in several other states, including some counties in Texas, Florida, Nevada, and New Mexico. Well, Mark Crispin Miller is a media critic who's been focused on voter problems and election fraud in this country. He's a professor at New York University, author of several books. Most recently, he edited Loser Take All. Election Fraud and the Subversion of Democracy, 2000 to 2008. His previous book, Fooled Again, How the Right Stole the 2004 Election, Why They'll Steal the Next One, Too. Mark Crispin Miller now joins us in the Firehouse Studio. Welcome to Democracy Now! Great to be here. What are your concerns right now, Mark? Uh, well, you've uh, referred to a couple of them already. We now see uh, a, 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 a burst of... Uh, vote flipping by machines, uh, electronic voting machines in a couple of states. This is something that we saw in uh, at least 11 states in the 2004 election, hundreds and hundreds of people uh, coming forward to say, I pushed the button for Kerry and the button for Bush lit up. So clearly, this was a systematic programming decision by the people uh, in charge of the machines which in that case, and this one, is the Republican Party. We're also seeing uh, systematic shortages of working voting machines in Democratic precincts only. This is also something that did not happen only in Ohio in 2004, but happened nationwide. Uh, that election was, in fact, stolen. How the, do you know that? Well, I know, uh, be because uh, there's been an audit of the vote in 18 counties of Ohio. Uh, by a researcher named Richard Hayes Phillips, who had his team literally scrutinize every single ballot that was warehoused in 18 Ohio counties. They took over 30,000 digital photographs. Uh, this is not speculation, Amy. This is a, a meticulous, careful, specific, and conclusive demonstration that uh, John Kerry actually uh, won uh, some 200,000 votes in those 18 counties only that were taken away from him. Bush's official victory margin, you may recall, was about 118,000. So there is no question about it. Ohio was stolen. When they, okay, so they have the pictures of all these. The pictures, there's a CD with this book. That but you they can, have the pictures of the, um, of the ballots. Of the, of the variously altered, mutilated ballots, yes. Uh, ballots with stickers placed over the square that people had blacked in for Kerry Edwards. Somebody else blacks in uh, Bush Cheney. Uh, thousands and thousands of ballots that were pre-marked before they were distributed so that people would mark different boxes on them and then they would be invalidated. Even more chilling is the fact that after Phillips did his research, uh, the boards of elections in 55 Ohio counties destroyed all or some of their ballots in defiance of a court order. So we have criminal behavior here uh, of, a, of a kind of grand and systematic kind. But the point is, uh, not to engage in what Sarah Palin calls finger-pointing backwards. The point here is to note that we're dealing with uh, a consistent pattern of uh, subversive behavior by the Republican Party since 2000 and extending all the way up to the present. What we're seeing now is an especially brazen and diverse range of dirty tricks and tactics that are being used both to suppress the vote uh, and also to enable election fraud. Ohio has been very much in the news this past week, not around the issue of voter suppression, but around the issue of fraudulent registration forms, the concern about them being handed in uh, by the organization ACORN. Yeah, the, the whole ACORN thing is, is a first-class propaganda drive. ACORN has done nothing wrong. Uh, ACORN has, however, been guilty of um, trying to register low-income uh, citizens to vote. 
uh, because they've been in the sights of the Republican Party for several years now, they've always been extremely scrupulous about checking the registration forms that they, that they garner from their volunteers. You know, they pay people, uh, basically, to register other voters. So naturally, from time to time, some volunteer who wants the money will uh, fill out a registration form, you know, with Mickey Mouse or the names of the Dallas Cowboys, something like that. Precisely because that is an ever-present possibility, the people at Acorn have always scrupulously checked the forms before uh, submitting them. And uh, 10 days ago, what they did was, in Las Vegas, at their office in Las Vegas, they found a number of these suspicious forms, uh, handed them over directly to the Secretary of State in Nevada, and his response was to turn around and say, aha, here is evidence that you're conspiring to commit voter fraud. Now, that effort, that drive, went from Nevada to Missouri to Ohio, and now we hear that the FBI is investigating ACORN. The important point here, Amy, is that voter fraud is practically non-existent. Uh, several studies have, have, have taken a close look at this and found that there really is no voter fraud of this kind.